Okay, welcome back everybody to the new episode of、uh, the Lacrosse Thinker podcast. And today we actually have the first time two guest speakers a- a- on the podcast for the same time: our Chancellor Joe Gao and his wife Carmen Wilson. Both of them are experienced administrators of、uh, the school, but today they are actually going to come here and share their experiences on vegan diet. So surprise! <laughs>、uh, let's start with a short introduction because we are pretty familiar with、uh, Joe. So tell、sure. us a little bit about yourself, Carmen. Sure. Well, I actually started my career here at UW La Crosse in 1996 as an adjunct faculty member, and、uh, earned a tenure track position and was. Promoted and tenured in the psychology department, and I held several leadership positions, including、uh, chairing the faculty senate and、uh, taking over the 2005-6 HLC accreditation visit. And so I co-chaired that, moved into the affirmative action officer role, and then、uh, was nominated to be the dean and CEO of two of the two-year campuses in the UW colleges when they were still the UW colleges, and I. Was privileged to be able to choose which campus, and I chose University of Wisconsin Rock County in Janesville, and I was the leader on that campus for four years, and then、uh, was ready to pursue another opportunity, and I ended up、uh, serving as the provost and vice president of academic and student affairs at Dickinson State University in North Dakota. And I did that for about three and a half years, and they, I came in when the school was very challenged, and、uh, I was able to work with our team, and we we increased enrollment by about six percent, and、uh, retention by seventeen points in three and a half years, and we concluded a very successful HLC accreditation visit. And at that point, Joe and I decided that perhaps the、uh, commute back and forth was taking its toll, and And I had done what I needed to do, and so I returned to Lacrosse in July. And we have been working together、uh, on alumni relations and donor relations since then. So that was North Dakota, right? How, yeah. How long did you drive there? Well, it was a flight.、Oh, okay. It's it's about ten hours to drive it.、Um, oh, okay. But yeah, so we we flew back and forth, and、uh, there's a particular airline that is very. They like us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So、uh, let's start with the vegan diet.、Mm-hmm. So I know both of you actually are on this diet. So how long have you been eating vegan diet? Well, I went to vegan, and you know it's interesting. More people now are saying plant-based. I think vegan sounds a little,、uh, you know, cultish or something. And, and the plant-based seems to be the the breakthrough terminology. But just recently, yeah, th- yeah, really. Now I started back in the、um, late. 1980s, and really, what happened was I was、um, cutting down on red meat. You know, I grew up eating everything, and then、um, I started reading about that red meat. You know, there were some downsides to it, and a lot of the pro athletes started saying, "Yeah, we're doing less of that." So I did less, and then I found that I had a、um, lactose intolerance. So then you can't eat dairy. So you're really sort of All right, might as well just be vegan and e- eat a lot of、um, plant-based proteins and things like that. So, yeah, I've been doing it for you know that's like thirty years almost. I mean, at least over twenty-five. So it it, it it was a lot more unusual back then than it is now. I mean, now you've got you know Burger King and the Impossible Burger, and you know it, it, it's、uh, getting kind of mainstream. Interesting. Well, and I, I came into it later.、Uh, in two thousand and two, I had the the honor of being able to teach in the Wisconsin and Scotland program. UWL used to be a part of that, and so it's a program where UW faculty from several institutions take UW students from several institutions to. A palace in Scotland, and the UW students take classes from UW faculty. They just do it in Scotland. And I was able to bring my daughter with me, and she was 15, turning 16 at the time. And、uh, it's 2002, and so there was this mad cow thing going on, and so I had this irrational mad cow disease fear, and I, <laughs> so I decided I wouldn't eat any meat while I was over there, and so、uh, I was strictly vegetarian. I was still consuming dairy at the time. I came home and ate a hamburger, and was just sick to my stomach, and I thought, well. Fooey on this! I don't really need the meat anyway, 
So uh, a few years after that, I uh, you know went to the doctor for my annual checkup, and they did some blood work, and the nur- nurse called me, and she said, well, your cholesterol is borderline high. And my father had had a heart attack in the late 1990s, and what, after his heart attack, my mom said to the cardiologist, well, he's going to have to stop eating eggs, right? And the cardiologist said, if he wants to control his cholesterol with diet, he'll need to go vegan. My father said, and what is that? And she told him, and he said, and what medication are you putting me on? Because I am not doing that, right? He's very much a meat and potatoes guy. But I thought, well, at this point, you know, I'm not that far. I had, I had already stopped using things like butter on my bread and dressing on my salad just because, you know, I just didn't need those extra calories. And, uh, you know, it's flavorful without it. And so... Um, so I said, well, I'll give up, you know, the cheese that I'm eating and the occasional egg and whatever dairy there might be in baked goods. And, and so my cholesterol has maintained a, a healthy range since then. So, so is it, it's fair for me to say, like, vegan diet but made both of you guys healthier? Yeah, I th- we, we, we think so. And, um, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're pretty particular now. I mean, if, if you, you know, French fries are vegan, but if you're eating a lot of fried things, that wouldn't be entirely healthy. So we right. we try to do, you know, lower fat and um, plant based and lower sodium. Although she probably likes salt more I than do. I do, um, you know, just for the health benefits. And my doctor said, um, you know, I have some of the lowest cholesterol he's ever seen when I had a physical recently. So it it seems to work pretty well in that regard. Mm-hmm. Especially you have been doing that thing for 30 years. So yeah. that thing should so significant to improve on that thing, right? All right, right. Interesting. So when you first switch, like was that a painful process? Like you, you were used to red meat and then suddenly you cannot eat? Or was it more like a... Well, I was definitely baby steps. You know, it was, it was giving up... Uh, you know, meat initially, and you know, and and butter then, and then dressing, and then, you know, cheese. The cheese was hard, I, I will say, uh, uh, because a really good aged uh, gouda, or you know, that 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 you know, I really, really, that was the hardest thing for me. But that said, there are some really fantastic nut cheeses out there, uh, and I have learned how to make some cheese that is, it's not exactly the same, but it's very tasty. We just had a, a round of a smoked nut cheese that, that was yeah. really good, and we were at Joe's mom's house, and his aunt was there and some of his cousins, and we had got it there, and we brought it out, and they were eating it, and they're like, hmm, this is tasty. So, yeah. I would say... Yeah, I I didn't do it like dramatically, but like you said, with dairy, I did. I mean, I I was just not feeling very well, and I read an article, and it said, you know, if you feel this certain way, try cutting out dairy for a week and see if it makes a difference. It made a huge difference. Huh. So, like sort of overnight, I went from eating dairy to not. And yeah, I will say, particularly back. In that day, they did not have very good substitutes for cheese mm-hmm. or milkshakes or, mm-hmm. you know, even milk. Like like today, it's amazing. Almond milk, cashew milk, soy milk. It's like so many options. In the late 80s, there was very little of that. So it was um, tough, I, I think, in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fascinating. You know, you sort of think of, well, giving up meat – but then, and, and, and we can talk a little bit about this because it has evolved. Back in the old days, it was like, well, then you're going to have to get your protein from like tofu or tempeh, um, soy, mainly those mm-hmm. things. And, you know, tofu on its own is not really that interesting. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's a pretty bland food. So, you know, that, that was a, a problem. But now... Wow, this has evolved into there's a thing called seitan, which is a real high intense wheat gluten um, that is just really I, I guess it's kind of like chicken, mm-hmm. you know, and you can do a lot with it that makes it almost indistinguishable from meat, and that's why like these things like the Impossible Burger at Burger King, if you go and eat that, we 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 tried one and you know it it tastes like a hamburger we we think from the old memories and yeah. things like that so um it has evolved pretty dramatically mm-hmm. yeah and the the number of commercial products has just exploded even in the last five years 
mm-hmm. it's 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 really something um, to go to the freezer section at you know the grocery store and you'll find vegan meatballs, chicken strips, barbecue chicken wings, hamburgers, uh, fishless fillets, crabless cakes. You I know. mean, there's almost anything that you would want that is available. Now that's at the supermarket. Restaurants, whole different story. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, these things, although again, the, the, the Burger King yeah. Impossible Burger, and I think, um, oh, I saw on the TV the other day, Dunkin' Donuts has like a <laughs> sausage, sausage, you know, yeah. sandwich. So, so it is getting, but um, like if we want to go out to dinner, there's not a whole lot of places to go. Yeah. Um, actually, the hoo hot we love because you can get some tofu and then pick your veggies and your proteins and things and how much sauce you want. And th- th- they they go to um, great lengths to like clean the grill and sometimes we're almost like okay you don't have (laughs) to like it wouldn't kill us if we had meat because like we grew up with it but they're very good about that there so for now actually if you eat any meat it it won't be a problem it's just like your yeah i just think you know it it makes my stomach hurt just because I'm not used to so digesting. Yeah, I uh, some when I was at Rock County, we there was a group of us who were going to have some lunch together, and a woman was going to pick it up, and I said, "Yeah, get me some vegetable fajitas, you know, from the Mexican place that'll work." And um, I was eating it, and I looked down, and and it had the 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 juice that they were in. It had those little kind of fat. Spot, fatty spots it was it's like this is chicken broth right and I thought well no big deal but I decided not to finish it and several hours later I just had this horrible stomach ache and I'm like what is wrong with me and I didn't connect it initially and then it dawned on me it's like wait I had you know a, a, a meat based protein and it just it just doesn't set well you, you know? know it's interesting because there's the health dimension and now, and, and, and we didn't get into this because of this, but it's amazing the sustainability aspect of plant-based foods is, is very extraordinary. And I think that's why we're seeing it be mm-hmm. more mainstream now is people are saying, well, because like that, that Impossible Burger, nutritionally, it's equivalent or maybe not even as good as the red meat yeah. version But for the planet, in terms of um, using land and greenhouse gas emissions and things, and water, yeah, there's there's you know pretty good data on it's just much better. And so I think we're seeing a lot of people um, go more in the direction of plant-based foods because of their concern about the environment. That totally makes sense because uh, I just recently read a report about um, how much waste that we produce just by producing meat. Mm -hmm. It's really a huge number yeah we, ex- ex- we exceed what i expected so. well and it's yeah. interesting when i went to north dakota i was in western north dakota you know it's ranch land right and and so everybody drives a pickup and eats a lot of meat and i'm vegan and i drive a prius and they <laughs> like had no idea what to do with me but the, there was an egg program and in one of the classes um the faculty member always had the students had a debate of sorts between for students and one side were carnivores and one side was vegetarian and so once I got there he had me come in to talk a little bit about vegan and what that was like and and then you know come to the debates and and it was really challenging for those kids who were on the vegetarian slash vegan team to be able to argue for that because their whole culture is meat and you know and I learned some things I mean certainly there's you know the land that the cattle graze on is not you can't farm it Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not it's not suitable for farming. You know, I mean, you know, so it's 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 interesting. I I don't we wouldn't ever want to see the whole world go vegan. You know, that's not our mission. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't mind other people eating meat. And and when I've had uh, dinner guests, I have actually I make meat dishes for them. Uh, in in addition to vegan dishes, uh, you know, so yeah, that's that's important to note. I mean, we, we are not. Um, saying this is the only way to live, and 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 it would be kind of hypocrisy. I mean, I grew up I mean, yeah. eating just a wide range of foods, and that was fine, you yeah. know. So um, hopefully, really, what we we are 
very happy to see more options right. uh, available, you know, for people that, that don't um, eat meat. But um, it can be tricky um, socially because, you know, it's a great thing to get together and have a meal. And sometimes, depending upon some people are, are very sort of, oh, yeah, I'm aware of that and can do that. And then other people, I mean, like my mom, <clears throat> I don't know even today, she just still doesn't quite get that. Like, how can you have like a good yeah. meal without a meat main dish and, yep. you know, and sort of, okay, you know, it's kind of fun. We were just visiting her and we were sitting watching the Today Show and the segment was plant-based foods. And, yeah. it, and it was like, see, mom, like this is <laughs> this on the is Today Show. So it, it, it's not that weird, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I think black, white, white is always not the best option, right? It's more about the balance between That's how much of your food is consisting of plant-based mm -hmm. and the other one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think definitely from my standard, people are eating too much meat here. Mm. Yeah. For sure. So definitely we need a balance. Um, so... Let's say this, you talk about inviting people coming to mm -hmm. have dinner and also go to other people's places for banquet. Uh, how do you handle that? Do you have a special recipe when people come to your house? Well, and, and from when the, what a, one of the things I was referring to is when I was at Rock County and I was the leader of the campus, I had a, a little kind of competition of sorts for the faculty and staff around the holidays. There were several different uh, giving options. So we had a giving tree for our adult students with children to help them be able to provide Christmas to their families. We had our foundation, we had the United Way, and there were a couple of other things that were going on. And so for every, every $25 people gave, they got their name put into a hat. And then I would I'd draw three names and they could each bring a guest and I would fix them a fabulous Indian feast. And so <coughs> I, in those occasions I did, I, I did make chicken korma with real chicken. Um, but you know, when, when occasionally my mom, my mom lives near here and she'll come down and, you know, and if we grill out, I'll say, you know, bring whatever meat you want, or I can pick you up some meat or whatever, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's interesting being in the positions that we're in, you're you're very privileged because people will ask you, oh, well, what what do you want? You know, um, so it's, but you know, we don't want to put people out no. when we're we're visiting with them, and and you know, something as simple as, um, oh, gee, I mean, a pasta with a red sauce and some vegetables and some beans in it is a there's a simple. Yeah. you know, um, vegan dish that's just fine. Um, it's always really um, kind when some people have invited us places and they'll, like, say, I tried this mm -hmm. for the first time. I went on the Internet and I found all this information. And, and you know, that's, like, really nice. Yeah. She, though, in our household is the cook and, and really does it well and does a lot of experimentation. And, you know, I mean... The, it's almost like now we're at a point where it's not there's a lack of something. There's this expanding, yeah. you know, like options because you can do so much when you really know how to uh, mm -hmm. cook that way. Interesting. So is it cheaper or more expensive to eat a plant-based diet? You know, I, I would talk to students about this, and they would always ask that question. I'd say, well, it doesn't have to be more expensive, you know, if you do a lot of things yourself. However... I recently looked at the price of meat when I had this chicken, and I said, holy cow. I mean, I had, I had, it's been so long since I bought meat, I had no idea how expensive meat was. So we can get a pound of tofu for, uh, I think it's like three twenty nine, dollars And, um, you know, that's, that. I mean, compared to a pound of chicken or and a pound of ground beef, you know, it's it's very comparable or even less expensive. Tempeh is a little bit more expensive. A pound of tempeh is about seven dollars, so that would be, you know, like a, a and that that a pound of tempeh we could eat uh, two two plus meals from. Like two yeah. yeah, two people is two plus meals. So you know that's very reasonable. Um, so tonight, <clears throat> though, we're having. Uh, I made some steaks, 
out of gluten, you know, this, this, so this wheat meat product. Uh, I found a chef uh, who has cookbooks, and he's really got it down. So um, we're going to have beef stroganoff. And so I found that we've got some uh, eggless noodles, and I'll make the mushroom gravy, and I like to put peas in it. Um, tomorrow night we're going to what, what else is on the menu for this weekend? We're going to have hamburgers that I made. Kung Pao cod. And Kung Pao cod. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the, Kung Pao, the Kung Pao cod is uh, the cod is a, a tofu based uh, fish fillet. Okay. Um, and, and it does not have the texture of fish, but it it does have a fishy. You put some uh, wakimi in it to make it, you know, kind of that fish flavor. So. Yeah, yeah, I lived in a temple for a while, and then I saw how the monks actually handle those kind of things. We're back in China, so oh, it's sure. not like as many selections as here, yeah. but I certainly see how many different ways they can cook tofu. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you would know, yeah. right? And, and, and not all tofu is created equal, right? There's, there's uh, I was disappointed I couldn't get the best kind of tofu last night when we went to the market, so I had to, you know, you have to press it, right, to get as much of the liquid out of it as possible, but there's a... Uh, wild wood, high protein tofu that's vacuum packed, and that doesn't require any pressing at all. So it's ready to eat right away. Uh, and I found, you know, when people say, ooh, tofu, <laughs> right? Uh, y- you know, if you can get that very firm tofu, and then I'll marinate it, and then bake it, and then we'll put it on the grill. And by that time, it's got enough T- enough firmness. You can't cut it with a fork. You have to have a knife. I mean, a butter knife, I'll be it. But, um, you know, it does, it isn't that mushy. I can imagine it almost tastes like chicken. Yeah. Yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah. You know, and, and how you marinate and season and it, it really, I think that was the thing that, that <coughs> I found most intriguing was that the meat itself, it might not be that. It's the how it's it seasoned and flavored and, you know, like barbecue sauce. And, I mean, she makes these um, seitan, again, that's the name of the, the gluten, uh, ribs. And you put the barbecue sauce on there, and it's just as yummy as the, mm-hmm. you know, meat ribs, I think. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and we've given them to other people, and sometimes they don't even know. You know well, and I make a, a gyro roast. And a couple years ago, I made a gyro roast, and I, I took a, um, a sample to Chef Rob over, you know, the head chef of Chartwell's. Uh-huh. Here on campus. Here on campus. And I, I gave him the recipe, and I gave him the sandwich, and just said, just so you know what kinds of things we can do. And he emailed me back and said, wow. He said, I'm kind of a Euro snob. And I thought, oh, brother. And he said, but that was really amazing. You know, so that's, and, and he was he was serious. It was, that was impressive. So, yeah. Actually, I don't even know. Do we have a vegan, like, counter in, oh, yeah. in the dining? Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's um, amazing. You know, I've been here, you know, a while. And just to watch that evolve and more and more students want these kind of dishes and so there are always options in um the whitney center and also at um the student union Mm -hmm. there's a a area with a stir fry that you can ask you know for tofu and tempeh are out there and sometimes they have a little seitan in the back and um, it's and there's always a vegan option of the day there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah, just like just, just like ready a, made, ready made. Yeah, yeah. So vegan it's, options. It's so. good. That's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. So, um, are there any? I would say performance wise, like for, from Lima's point mm-hmm. of view, like I eat meat and now I don't eat meat. Mm-hmm. Will my sports abilities, like for physical performance mm-hmm. or like mental performance, well, drop? I was reading an article the other day about how a lot of um, basketball players, professional, and even some football players are eating this way <coughs> in, in, for um, positions that require a lot of speed and jumping and, you know, so, so that it is. I mean, it probably would not be good for, like, if you're, you know, a football lineman, then you need to be really huge. You know, things, yeah. but it, but it, but but more um, lean kind of you know, and and um, that was interesting to see that some players said it it really did make a difference, um, but it it's not, I think, settled because there are other people who say, oh no, you got to have 
the meat protein, you know, for maximum athletic performance. But for the lifestyles that we have, it, it, you know, it's not that really much of an issue. And as far as like thinking wise, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and I, I think what's important is to get the protein. Right. Because I can tell if I have and we exercise daily and I can tell if I have not had enough protein in that my workout is really hard. Right. So um, that's then that when we travel, that's when we really struggle with the protein. Like if we go to a conference and there's a big banquet hall and, you know, they we always you know let people know ahead of time we're vegan. Uh, but m- Many times we get like rice with vegetables or there's, you know, something. There's that phenomenon if you go to a big city th- at a big hotel where they do mass production, they have a real hard time with yeah. this. And so, yeah, they'll typically give you like the rice and vegetables or potatoes without the meat and that's it. But then in that same city, you can go out and there are usually two, three, four or more restaurants that are totally – Mm plant-based so that everything on the menu we we like Mm -hmm. and um, that's really refreshing I I think in lacrosse there probably is not a big enough um, community of vegans that could you could support an entirely vegan restaurant also we've noticed now a lot of big cities the places that just served meat now are adding these Mm -hmm. vegan options. We were in San Antonio recently, and it was kind of fascinating Mm -hmm. to see how much we could eat there. And we had visited there a year or two Mm -hmm. prior, and there wasn't a lot. So it it, it definitely is growing in availability. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting point, because if you think about vegan, for me, it's just like as long as there's no meat, it's a vegan diet. But actually, a vegan diet consists of some necessary components yes. such as protein. So right. in your recipe, what will be a a hundred percent with all the necessi- necessary ingredients sure. healthy vegan diet with enough nutrition and Sure. Well I always have a protein. So it's and we try to balance um, tempeh and tofu with seitan. Uh, those are our main ways we get protein. I although I do use some beans and lentils as well, but we'll always have tempeh, tofu or seitan. And then uh, I always have something green, so some kind of green vegetable, spinach, broccoli, peas, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, something like that. And then we usually have a starch of some sort. Um, We do um, French fries, bake them in the oven, or do an air fryer. I have an air fryer now, and that's really great. Uh, Or rice or noodles or a potato or, you know, something like that. So try try to do a balanced, balanced plate. Yeah. Okay, so what's your uh, what's your main resource of protein again? I didn't so, know. so 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 tofu, tofu tempeh, tempeh okay. or um, seitan. Yeah. Yeah. S e i t a n. Seitan, not Satan. <laughs> and it's 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 it, 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 it's it, there's some confusion sometimes too because people will hear gluten free. Mm-hmm. And they'll sort of assume that gluten-free and vegan are synonymous, which is, is not at all the mm-hmm. case. And in fact, seitan is gluten. So right. somebody that had celiac disease, they, they wouldn't want to get anywhere near that. Right. Um, that would be very bad for them. So yeah. um, that's kind of interesting in restaurants because the, the, the yeah. line gets blurry there yeah. sometimes. And, and the gluten, what we really like about the wheat gluten, especially when I make it myself, uh, is that it's very uh, got a low fat to very high protein ratio. You know, so a serving of gluten might would have give or take 20 grams of protein per serving and maybe two grams of fat. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's that's it's very substantial. Okay. So yeah. for a student who who are or like any anybody mm-hmm. who are thinking about mm-hmm. uh, trying mm-hmm. picking a trial in vegan diet, mm-hmm. what do you suggest? Where how do they start? Like maybe replace one meal with that, starting with some, you know. You know, I and I've talked to colleagues about that, and uh, you know, maybe having like a meal a week or a day a week. But again, it's you know making sure to get that protein. There's uh, some great cookbooks out there. There's uh, this Lindsay Nixon has a series of cookbooks, The Happy Herbivore. And her cookbooks are uh, very, have accessible ingredients. 
easy to make recipes and I've served them to carnivores and they like devour them. So she has this great enchilada recipe that I took to a potluck at Rock County one time and I made a huge pan thinking it was on a Friday and I thought, well, we could have some leftovers for the weekend. They ate the whole thing. Hmm. And I'm like, you were supposed to save some of that, <laughs> right? Uh, and people were just stunned. It's like, that was tofu? I had no idea that was tofu. So uh, so, so that's a great starter cookbook, uh, The Happier Before by Na- Lindsay Nixon. I think the easiest way to do it, and we're going to get one of these restaurants here sometime, if they're, they're working on it, Noodles and Company. Uh-huh. They're pretty common. Mm-hmm. They have great tofu. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, they marinate it and they sear it. And mm-hmm. it really is, you know, so if you wanted to just try something. A vegan meal. Yeah, go there and get the Japanese pan noodles with the tofu. And, you know, you're, you're kind of, that, 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 that's an interesting introduction. That said, it might be more interesting at home to just go to one of the local supermarkets and buy, you know, there's a brand called Gardein. Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat. The, the just, you know, like the, the meatless hamburger or the meatless fish or the meatless, you know, um, chicken. And those, you just bake them, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and just substitute that for the meat in a meal and see what you think, you know. Um, yeah. I know there's a group here that is talking about a meatless Monday concept, and that would be great. And I, but I said, but you don't want people to think you're taking the meat away from the meat eaters on Monday. You're just having an option for people who want to say, okay, I'm going to skip meat on this Monday and do a plant-based, you know, thing. But you know, I, it's delicate because some people are really. They love their meat, and you know that's that's cool. You know, I I wouldn't want to change that. Um, it's like try a new restaurant or just try yeah. a new recipe, right? Yeah, right, like right. once a week, it's no big deal. Right, right. What about like uh, kids? Have we seen p- kids uh, going with vegan diet? And mm. yeah, are there any? I haven't I haven't known anyone who's had children on a vegan diet. I have had known some people who's who've been vegetarians, and their children are vegetarians. Can you actually elaborate on that? Because for me, I think vegan and vegetarians before this interview are exactly the same. Right. Ah. So so they would eat uh, dairy. So they would eat cheese oh. and eggs uh, and and cow milk sort of thing. Um, and it was it was cute that, that some, this um, Sometimes and then you get that what's pescatarian? Wait, they'll eat fish. Just fish and vegetables. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, right. so th- there are different approaches. Yeah. But vegan would be the one that it's is totally like plant based. No dairy, no meat. Right. Yeah. Okay. No no right. animal product. Right. Kind right. Of. Now, people sometimes ask us that. Is this um like an animal rights thing that you're doing? And that would be hypocrisy because I have a leather belt yep. and shoes um, yep. and so it, it it's not but there are some people who it's kind of you know, that's their main motivation, and, and they, that's we respect that. And and, and they uh, would live a vegan lifestyle, right, where we eat a vegan diet. And so um, I, I think that's an important distinction to make. And, th- and then there are some things that, uh, you know, I, I sort of look the other way on. Um, so processed sugar is not always vegan because of the way that it's processed, um, and, and, you know, I can't, I know we don't use hardly any sugar anyway, but occasionally I need a couple teaspoons of brown sugar and, well, you know, I'm not going to. Honey technically would not be vegan. Right. What but because it comes from, an it comes from animal bees, bees yeah. and, okay. but you know, we use honey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, not a lot, but my, I grew up, my dad was a beekeeper. You know, and so it's like, and, and, you know, I don't really think of bees as animals. And, you know, so I, I, I you know, we, we, and you don't mistreat the bees. They're just doing their thing. And, you know, so, um, but. No, nobody got killed. By the right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, they, they do, they do die if they sting you, but that's their instinct. So, um, 
Yeah, I, more I I tend to use agave as a sweetener um, as my first choice, it, it it or maple syrup, depending on you know the kind of flavor that you want. But I will use honey and I will use sugar on occasion. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Uh, so other than vegan diet, are there any other activities come with the diet? I mean, we exercise every day. I mean, it's it's but I think you know. Like I was talking about earlier, the restaurants in major cities, it, it is kind of fun to just, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to go to San Francisco, what's there? And and I don't know how people did it before the yeah. internet, you know, because now it's so easy to just type in vegan food, you know, near me and, and, and then like, oh, this could be fun and look at that menu and, you know, we'll go there and it, it, it makes it a very special um, dining experience yeah. that 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 is you know really interesting um, and 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 pleasant. I would say on the other end of the continuum, though, is like when you're going to a business meeting somewhere and they say we're going to go to this restaurant, and you look at the menu and there's nothing, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like okay, how do we do that? You know um, that 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 because you don't want to make a big deal out of it, yeah. but. Yeah, I, I have a, a, a meeting com coming up in the next couple of weeks where, you know, I, I told the folks, you know, I eat a vegan diet and very kind woman sent an email and here's the menu for this restaurant that you're going to be having dinner at. There's not one main entree on there that's even close to to they like they, they could even modify to make it vegan you know and Although so in fairness we found that sometimes if you call the right. restaurant you say i know it's not on your menu right it's, but i'm vegan could you do something special and they will yeah do that and sometimes the, it, it, not always but sometimes the the, the chefs get kind of like excited, oh this is cool yeah. i don't get to do this every day right so that's right. always so. So that's nice. how we're working out that yeah. meal is is we'll call ahead and say the vegan is coming. So, so probably vegan is still a relatively small community com compared yeah. to other. Yeah. Like vegetarians, yeah. you almost get it everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There were there were things on the menu that were vegetarian. Certainly, they had a pasta dish, but it had it was a cheese filled ravioli. You know, it's like well, you you can't unfill the cheese. <laughs> you know. So, you know, a really interesting um, along these lines, pizza, and mm -hmm. there are some pizza places that. I, the Gall Pizza places could do a vegetarian one because they just a cheese pizza, but now a lot of them are getting the, the vegan cheese, and also getting the vegan meat substitutes, and y you know you can have a really full fledged pizza with the works, and yeah. it's all vegan, and um, yeah. that that there's a place um, Pizza Luce, up in the Minneapolis St. Paul area that that has several outlets and they do that and it's just really nice and you can you know maybe you're um we're going through there at a hotel or something and we're in a big rush and you can call or go on the web and and put the order in and they'll bring it to the hotel and it's full vegan you know really nice food well and, and when i was at dickinson state there was a pizza hut uh in town that would uh, we that the catered for the football games and the president's box and they or he always ordered or had his his assistant order a vegan pizza for me and there was a vegan that worked in the restaurant and there was a grocery store next door and so they would go to the grocery store buy the vegan meat and the vegan cheese and make the vegan pizza and we had to be like make sure we got our slices of pizza that we wanted before everybody else ate it. Because everybody it, else, they, they, they didn't know. They didn't know. They'd eat it, they and it'd be gone every difference. time. Every time. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So are vegan kind of like a uniform standard? Because let's say you go to a different place uh, with a stranger who is vegan, but basically whatever they oh, cook, yeah. you can eat. Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. no like, difference. No, no. It's, 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 it's probably one of the more restrictive diets, you know, um, I did have a friend that I saw once who was paleo, and there's like the only thing that overlapped was almond cheese. That was the only thing that we could both eat, you know, mm. like uh, because paleo is like a lot of, you know, she's saying, well, I can't have, 
you know, uh, legumes or beans or whatever. And whatever. I'm like, where do you get your protein? You know, it just didn't dawn on me. And she said meat and a lot of it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fair enough. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. So I think I learned a lot. May I uh, end with one last question? Yeah. If we are thinking about, or anybody who are interested in this, are there any local activities like, like for example, like the Vegan Monday? Is that a thing? Meatless Monday. Uh, yeah, meatless I, I Monday? don't. I don't know that there are groups per se. Um, or nice place around here which we can go and try someday. Well, you know, the Indian restaurant uh, that's south of campus, they actually have a vegan menu. Uh, Hoo Hot, like we said, uh, Shogun. Um, you know, has a nice teriyaki tofu. Teriyaki tofu, okay. Yeah, uh, and then when noodles comes, that'll be fantastic. The the you know any any Asian restaurant, I mean, you the, can get tofu and vegetables, but it's not terribly well, interesting. The people's food yeah. co-op. There are a lot of things that they make up there and sell that are mm -hmm. really good, yummy vegan things. And there's actually yeah. kind of a culture there you know and uh it's uh yeah they do a nice um in their deli case uh every so often they'll have a, a marinated tofu and so they have and several different types of it like blackened or jerk or um mongolian barbecue and again i would what i would recommend is that uh, you take it home and you bake it and then maybe even grill it after that if it's seasonal uh to get it to be super firm Cool. But I think I think the the, the future looks good. I mean, yeah. it, it it was it's it's it's. I never thought I would see the day when I'd be watching um, a football game on TV and there'd be an ad for a meatless hamburger. Right. Yeah. And the I possible mean, I, burger. I, it, it, you know. So I think it's only going to get more mainstream, and that's a positive thing, and and we'll welcome that. Uh, you know, just more options yeah. for everybody. You said that yeah. started like five years ago, right? I well, I would say within the last five years, there's been an explosion of. I mean, it, it's fun. We we when we go to the grocery store here or in other places, we just like to check out. You know, what have they got? And um, and and it just seems this this Gardein brand and Beyond Meat brand have really and uh, Field Roast uh, have have really come into the forefront. Yeah, good old fashioned Tofurky. Who yep, was tofurky. there. They were the first sort of cold cuts yeah um they're still doing great yeah products and uh That's check so. it out yeah cool yeah. sounds great thank you so much for joining oh, hey, thank, thank you, you. this is our pleasure good. this is wonderful thank you cool